Hello students, uh, welcome to this uh, session of Conceptual Orthopedics. Today we have Professor Gopakumar sir with us and sir will be discussing a very important topic, angular deformities around the knee. It's important from your theory point of view and especially from a practical point of view uh, for the exam cases also you get uh, on this topic. So over to you sir. Yeah. Angular deformities around the knee are common. Uh, problems which are asked for your theory as well as in the clinical and genuine valgum and genuine varum forms the majority of these uh, angular deformities. So this is a, you all know is a child with a genuine varum deformity and that second one is a child with genuine valgum deformity and the third one is what is called as a tackle deformity or a windswept deformity. or a windswept deformity. These are the common deformities that are seen. Even though flexion deformities and extension deformities are also seen, they are often not commonly kept for the exams. So I'll be concentrating more on the coronal plane deformities. So how will you take a decision as to what you should do? The first thing is, is the deformity real or apparent? Second, is the deformity physiological or pathological. If physiological, pathological, what is the cause of the deformity? How can we assess the deformity clinically as well as radiologically? And what are the treatment options available to you? And how will you take these treatment decisions? These are the uh, six points on which I am going to discuss this topic. First, is it real or apparent? See, whenever you keep your limbs externally rotated and you flex the knee, you find that there is a genu varan deformity. And the opposite is true. When you internally rotate and flex the knee, you will develop a genu valgum deformity. Okay. This is evident in this girl who has got a mild genuine valgum deformity in the first slide and on flexing the knee and uh, rotating the leg internally, you can see how much the genuine valgum deformity has increased. So assess the deformity with the patella centered over the femoral condyle and the pet or the patella facing forwards. So whenever you assess the deformities, the patella should be facing forward. That is the message. Is it physiological or pathological? This chart is very important because the, this was a study conducted by uh, Selnius and Menka. When a child is born, they have got around 15, more than 15 degree of varus. 15 degree of varus. As the child grows slowly, the varus deformity disappears and it becomes almost straight by two years of age. Then it uh, shifts to genu valgum and the genu valgum will be maximum by around the age of three years and slowly it decreases by around the age of six or seven they become normal. What about Indian children? Certain studies have been done in Indian children also. Physiological virus rarely persists beyond two years. That is one message from these studies. Even the study conducted from Vellur by Vrisha Madam shows that uh, in almost all cases, physiological virus uh, disappeared by two years. Virus after three years seems to be atypical for Indian children. Peak knee valgus uh, averaging around eight degree is seen uh, in six years and it is more in females. Valgus at the knee decreases and stabilizes around four to five year degrees by 10 years of age. So. Uh, compared to the other uh, population, the Indian children, uh, there is a persistence of valgus sli sli to a slightly uh, older age group. So it becomes normal by around 8 to 10 years of age. So how will you differentiate between physiological and pathological? One age group, so we know that virus below the age of 2 years and valgus between the age of two uh, to around 
8 years it can be considered physiological. Second is symmetry. Pathological deformities are usually asymmetrical while physiological deformities are usually symmetrical. Severity and again the severity of the lesion it will be much less in cases of physiological deformities. Pain is never a feature of physiological genovarum deformity. So, if the patient is symptomatic, that means that there is some underlying pathology. Limb length discrepancy is not seen in physiological deformities. The unfe the, you look for features of dysplasia and metabolic bone disease, they are also absent. These are the points on which you can differentiate between physiological and pathological. First is the age group, second is the symmetry, the third is the severity, four is the symptoms especially pain, limb length discrepancy and the features of dysplasia and metabolic bone disease. On the basis of these criteria, one can easily distinguish between a physiological and pathological deformity.